Welcome to Molly Mish. We're an American family of five driving around the world since 2008. With summer season already ended, we arrive in Switzerland with our sights set on the mountain passes. As cold weather is quickly approaching, our time is limited. Join us as we attempt to traverse three of the highest paved roads in the Swiss Alps in one day. I'm making egg salad. This is uh, actually an experiment from a video I watched yesterday by Kenji Lopez Alt. Really just the way to boil hard boiled eggs. That's uh, easy, it doesn't require a lot of different steps and most importantly, peels nicely. I've seen a lot of different techniques that require things like, you know, drenching the whole egg into ice cubes, an ice bath afterwards, which is not a technique that works practically for us in here because we don't carry ice or have a lot of ice to, you know, use on cooling eggs. If we have ice, we're going to use it for drinks and other things. But this one's really nice because it, uh, it worked out. It worked out really well. None of the eggs, we hard boiled nine or ten eggs, none of the shell got fused with the skin. Really simple recipe, just eggs, mayonnaise, mustard, I use Dijon mustard, onions, celery, salt, pepper, garlic, I think that's it. I could use a little Tabasco in there, personally, but not everybody likes Tabasco, so I'll just put it in when I make my sandwich. There it is, egg salad sandwich. Last bit of little emergency that happened, I noticed when I was pulling our Wi-Fi extender off the roof, which is attached to our road shower, which is attached to a crossbar on a Yakima tower that's attached to my roof rails that's attached to the van. I noticed that that side of the Yakima crossbar was loose and right underneath the very back of the road shower, which shocked me, first of all. And when I got up there, I realized the two bolts that secured the base of the, the Yakima Tower had just come off. And then the the bolts or the, the nuts, the track nuts that attach the base to the roof rails have just disappeared. I'm sure it has to do with a lot of the bumpy roads that we were driving on these last few months and all the shaking and also we had a full road shower most of the time so it's a lot of weight up there shifting back and forth and all of that motion uh somehow just uh shook the their little m6 bolts that's um that attach it two m6 bolts that attach the base of that side of the crossbar down to the roof track rails or the roof tracks so once that's gone then the one side i'm it's lucky that the other side didn't come off because otherwise we would have real problems um but i was able to find the key for the yakima towers which we haven't used in a while i was also able to find extra track nuts so it's bolted in there now but it also seems that one of the bolts that secures the very end of the roof rails to the roof of the van has also vanished. So the very end of a, the roof rail moves a little. That's not good. 
I got the crossbar secure now. I'll just keep an eye on that for the next couple of days as I drive. Today we're going to drive to go uh, go see three, at least two, if not three, mountain passes here in um, Switzerland. One of them is called Newfin Pass, and the other one is called Gothard Pass, and the third one, Furka, Furka Pass. And to see them all, they're sort of in the same general area, maybe about 10, 15 miles from each other. But to see them all, you're going to have to drive a loop. So we'll see how practical and how reasonable that is to do, and also what the weather looks like. But I think what we'll do, I think the first one we'll do is uh, Newfin Pass, right? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I know. It sounds like Furka is the most beautiful. So yeah. We'll to make sure we don't miss that one. That one also has a glacier. Okay. All right. So at least we'll do Newfin Pass and Furka Pass. We'll go see Gothard Pass is, uh, is one that we should do. So that's on the agenda today after we eat. Actually, go to the Gothar Tunnel first. It's only about 11 miles from here, and you bypass the Gothar Tunnel to get to the pass. And then what we'll do is we'll do the 11 miles back to where we are now, or somewhere around here, so that we can go to the west and go to the uh, Newfin Pass and the Furcus Pass or Furka Pass. That way we don't have to double back to come all the way back up here from Furka Pass. Oberalp is closed. We're bypassing the, the Gothar Tunnel to get to the Gothar Pass. For a while, it didn't look like things were looking good for us. We were in really, really thick fog clouds. And uh, as we kept climbing, when we got to the town of Andermatt, kind of cleared up. So we're in between two layers of clouds right now. And we're driving on the old Gothar Pass, right over the new Gothar Tunnel, which was built in the 80s. Yeah. And it's like a 10 mile long tunnel directly underneath us right now. And we're going over the top, over the old pass. So I think we're gonna be able to go over the pass and then we'll figure out how to get from here at the pass, get to the, at the top of the pass. We'll figure out how to get from here over to Newfin Pass, which might require a little bit of backtracking. Uh, for a while, it didn't look good. It didn't look like we we're gonna be able to see anything because of how limited the visibility was. Gothar Pass. It is just under 7,000 feet. This would have been the pass that they would use to drive over to go down from Switzerland to Italy back in the day before the tunnel was made. So now people only drive this for for fun or for touristy reasons like us. So I think what we're gonna do is drive down the other side towards Italy 
and then turn around and go back in the tunnel and go back up where we kind of started so we can hang a left and go see Newfin Pass. One down, two to go. <clears throat> okay, so we went over Gothar Pass and then went down the other way. Unfortunately, once we got down the other way, it was really foggy. The clouds were on the way down to the bottom of the pass where the Gothar Tunnel uh, comes out on the south side towards Italy. So we got to the bottom, turned around, went back up through the tunnel, ended up back where we started at the top before we went over the pass at the north side of the tunnel. And now we're back through the town of Andermatt again. And we're going to, instead of going straight to go through Gothar Pass, now we're going to make a right to go to Furka Pass. And Furka Pass, fingers crossed, is going to be clear without too many clouds in our in our view because uh, Furka Pass is supposed to have view of a really giant glacier. So let's hope we can see that. Okay, right here is where we turn right versus going straight. And from here, we're only about 11 miles from Furka Pass. And we're going to try to find the pullout or the parking lot where we can see the glacier. This is just a little pull out on the way up to Furka Pass. We had this opportunity to stop for a minute, take in the scenery. So we're stopping here. Check it out. There's a little sign called James Bond Street. So I believe this is uh, in one of the Bond movies. This area was featured. I'm not exactly sure which one. If I find out, I'll put that right here so you guys know. But look at that stunning scenery that is really beautiful that's the town of Furka right there and then I think just to the edge of this mountain there at the at the very end of this road that you can see is uh, must be Andermatt that's where we came from so now we're going up to the top of the pass 1964 how cool is that at this exact spot it was shot at least the stills from the from the production shows that they were at this exact spot really cool That right there is a famous Swiss hotel, the Hotel Belvedere. And then here, there's some kind of ice grotto, ice cave thing over here, but you have to pay to go in, but it's not open. However, the side gate is open. And if you go all the way to the end of this little side storage area, you can see the pool 
that the glacier is melting into and there's chunks of ice and if you just peek your head around the corner you can see a little chunk of the glacier check it out Beautiful spot. This is just about two miles down from where we were at the top of Furka Pass. And uh, here, from here, we're gonna go down a little ways. Then we're gonna hang a left. That's gonna take us over to Newfin Pass. Smaller road, supposedly. I don't know, smaller than this. Some of this road is pretty small. But we're gonna go, uh, there's not much else to see here. All this stuff is, is shut down already. They probably have a super, super short season. I'm guessing maybe the last day of September was when they were last open. That was about a week ago now. We're gonna get a quintessential Hotel Belvedere shot with the van. Here it is. This is Newfin Pass. It's pretty think, cloudy. Beautiful view. We think it's here. <laughs> well, it is. I see the sign. Okay. But um, yeah, it was a it was a nice drive coming up here. Let's see if I can just look over to the edge here. There's like a restaurant souvenir shop up here. The highest paved pass in Switzerland. So there isn't really anything to see right now with the, the way the clouds are, but if we just kind of continue going where we are, we'll end up at the bottom of the first pass, Gotham, uh, Gothard Pass, which is where the Gothard Tunnel, uh, the south end of the Gothard Tunnel. So then from there, we can just drive south. Uh, actually, isn't very far at all until we get to Italy. It's pretty cold. It's 35 Fahrenheit outside right now. So we're not going to be doing any hiking. That's all the time we have up here. We're going to keep going. I don't know where we're going right now. So that's just a place that I picked randomly. Yeah, I know. All right, so now we're back down on the south end of the Gothar Tunnel. So instead of going back up like we were earlier today, we're going back down. We've done all three passes now. And actually, <laughs> we're not far from where we started this morning. But at least we're done with uh, driving through all the passes and checking it out. We had, I think, the best one was Furka Pass. Mostly because we had the best visibility from up there. It really isn't a great day to do this drive, but this is the day that we have. There's going to be some snowy days in the next couple days that will make this even harder. It doesn't look like we're going to see any clear weather for a while, so there's no sense of waiting. So we just took a chance, we did it, and now we're heading south. We could be in Italy in the next hour or so, but we're probably going to find a place to stop sooner so that the kids can finish school for the day. Thank you.